Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn about basics of pandas. And this will be a whole series where we are going to learn data analytics from very basic to advanced. So do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. Now let's quickly jump to the tutorial part. For this tutorial, I have downloaded a data set from Kaggle that is about movie and TV shows on Netflix. So I'll share the link in the description. You can download it from there, right? So let's have a look on the data set first and then we will move on and perform action on that data set itself. Right? Now, if you check this data set here, so it has show ID, type, title and all the information related to movies and TV shows. And also in this director, we can see we have multiple blank columns, right? So this will be handled in the code itself. Now let's check other columns that we have. So we have this cast and then we have country and this country is also having some blank informations, right? Then we have date added, release year ratings and all informations with respect to movie and TV shows. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you see how many rows we have, so we have around 8,000 rows. Mm -hmm. So we have total of 8,800 entries. Okay. So yeah, let's move on to the notebook and start writing code. So first thing that we have to do is to install all our dependencies. Here are dependencies are first pandas and numpy. We'll use numpy for computation processes. And after that, we are going to import the warning as well. So let's install numpy and pandas first. And to run a command in our notebook, we are going to use this exclamation mark and then we can write the command itself. So here if you see, we have this exclamation mark and pip install pandas and the second library that we need is numpy and then we'll press shift enter to run the shell. Okay. So here we see that this is installed already. So now we are going to import this first import pandas as pd and then import numpy as np and further let's import warnings to ignore all the warnings that panda give at times so for that we are going to use filter warning function from warning library so here filter warnings and in this we are going to pass ignore so we have all our dependencies let's run this shell and import them all right and now we don't need this command to install it so let's comment this out and run the shell Perfect. So we have successfully imported all our dependencies. Now in this directory itself, I have the Netflix titles.csv, which is the data set that we are going to use. Now in pandas, we have multiple functions using which we can read any file. It could be a CSV file, Excel sheet or JSON or from SQL as well. So let's look on to all the functions that we have in pandas. So for that, df equals pd.read. So if you check this, we have multiple functions present. It's CSV, Excel, Feather, FW, and if you move down, we have HTML, JSON, SQL, and many more, right? So here we are going to use CSV. So let's use that. So in this function, we are going to pass in path of the file where we have our data. So we'll simply right click on this and then copy relative path. And we're going to paste and now let's run this. Okay. So it has successfully executed, but at times we have multiple slashes in them. So let's copy whole path of this and paste it here. Now in the full path, we have multiple slashes present and at times Python read this as a special character. So it throws error to handle it. We have to write here R and after passing R, it will consider this as a string and execute the line. So let's execute the shell. Now we have successfully loaded our data in this df that is our data frame here, right? So let's simply write df and see what data we have. Okay. So here if we see we have all the columns present and all the rows. Now it shows top five and bottom five rows. Now we also have a head function in pandas, which is going to print n number of heads. Okay. So let's write here head. And in this, if we don't pass anything, it is going to print top five rows. And suppose if you pass some number in this, like if I have passed 12 and I'm running this. So here it has printed top 12 rows, right? And in the same fashion, we also have a tail function. And if we check that, so we have df dot tail, the same as head. This is also going to return bottom five rows. So let's execute this. So here we have bottom five rows and let's pass in some number. We'll pass four, let's say. And now let's execute it again. 
so this time it has only provided us with four rows in it right so the next function that we have is info and this info function will return all the information with respect to structure of this data for example how many rows are there how many columns we have in this particular data set also what type of data is in show id type like it's string integer or something else so let's have a quick look on it as well right let's execute this now as said we have all the information with respect to how many rows we have and how many columns we have right also what type of data is stored in it so here we have this d type in which it says object and int 64 so if we check this release here in our data set we have it as numeric so it is int 64 and it is treating all the string as object and further if we see we have this non-null count and this non-null count means that how many values are present in each particular column so in show id we have 8807 which means none of the entries have null value in it now in director we see that it is only 6000 right so it means that multiple values are blank also while having a quick look on the sheet we saw that multiple columns were blank right so this is reflected here itself that we have around 2000 entries which are blank and if you see cast and country this also have multiple entries blank in it we'll handle it later so this info function has returned all the information with respect to the structure of the data and what data is being stored in it. So along with info, we also have a describe function. Let's check that as well. So describe and we'll run this. So this describe function works on all the numeric value and here the release year was numeric. So it has provided its count, mean, standard deviation. Now along with this, we have many more information which are used in analyzing the data. So we can use this for statistical analysis and info was used for knowing about the data that we have. Now till now we have checked info function, describe function and tail head right. We also have certain attributes of data frame as well. For example, columns. Okay. So if we check that attribute here so df dot columns columns and if you run this it provides a list of all the columns that we have right so this is an attribute of pandas data frame now we also have another attribute named as shape that provides total number of rows and columns so let's check that as well so df dot shape so total number of rows here we have is 8807 and columns are 12 right now further let's check how many null values we have in our data frame so for that we have another function named is null so df dot is null okay and let's call this function now this function provides a list of boolean values which tells whether this is a null value or not here we see that this is a false because we have s1 and s2 but here in country we have this as true which means this is a null value so let's sum up all these for that we have a sum function that is going to calculate how many null values we have in it okay so we can write here dot sum and we'll call this as well so in director we have around 2600 entries as blank and cast have some 800 and country also 800 now this has written all the null values that we have let's calculate total percent of null values that we have in each column for that we have to iterate it on this df dot columns so let's do that so for i in df dot columns and then we'll calculate the null rate now this null rate equals df and i which means we want i column and here i is name of that particular column for example we have show id director country etc and then we are applying is na function so is na is also same as is null so we are using is na here and again we are going to use this sum so df dot is na dot sum is going to return total number of na values or null values in a particular column and then we are dividing it with length of the data frame and then multiplying it by 100 so this will calculate the total percentage of null values right now let's print null rate only when we have it greater than zero so we have a if condition here which checks whether this is greater than zero and then it is going to print it 
so yeah also at the end we are rounding this off so to round off anything we pass in the variable and then till what decimal values we are going to round off so let's execute this now so it has provided all the percentage how much null rate we have so in director it is the highest that is 29.9 percent and then in cast we have 9.37 and 9.4 in country and so on so this has given some of all the null values also there are chances at times we have multiple duplicate rows present in our data frames so let's check that as well for that also we have another function named duplicated okay so df dot duplicated and we are also going to use sum in this and let's check this as well how many duplicate values we have so if we see we have zero duplicate values in this so we don't need to handle all this we are pretty clear that we have to only handle all these null values for our data visualization part so first we are going to handle the country column so df and in this we are going to handle the country column so country so in this we are going to use another function of pandas that is fill na which will fill all the null values with a value that we are going to provide so fill na and we are going to fill all the country column with mode of it so let's calculate the mode again so we'll simply copy this country paste it here and dot mode right this will calculate mode of country and this mode will return a list of countries but we only want the first one so we are simply going to use indexing and we'll use the zeroth column of it and we want to update this mode in the data frame itself right so for that we have to pass in another argument that is in place equals true right so let's run this and again check the null values that we have so we'll simply copy it from here and let's paste it so in countries we now have zero null values and if we check it initially we had 831 entries as null so this shows that we have successfully replaced all the null values in our country column now let's replace all the null values from cast and director as well for that we are going to use replace function so df and in this we want to apply changes on cast so we'll pass here cast and dot replace so in replace we are going to pass in what we want to replace and with which we want to replace so here we are going to use np.nn which will check all the null values in our cast column right so np.nn and this will check all the null values and we want to replace it with no data so we'll pass in another string that is no data okay so next we'll pass in in place equals true here as well so equals true and we pass in place equals true because we want to modify the original data frame all this function here that we are using returns another data frame so it is a good practice that we minimize the number of variables that we have right to optimize the memory so we are using in place equals true which modifies the original variable and its location right so that's why we are using in place equals true now here it will replace all the null values from this cast column and now we'll copy this from here right and we'll paste it after this line so this will verify whether all our changes are done properly or not so let's run this so again we can see this cast is now having zero null values so in the same fashion let's copy this and do the same for this director so we'll simply copy it from here and paste it and let's re-execute this shell so now we have majority of our null columns sorted so but we still have this date added rating and duration column as null but we have lesser value of null values in all of these as compared to director cast and country so let's drop all these columns using df.dropna so df.dropna right right let's execute this and uh, let's move this at the end of the code right and rerun this right so as you can see here it has not dropped all these null values you know why because we have not used this in place equals true in this function okay so let's pass this and rerun this perfect so now we have all the null values sorted as expected 
सो वी हैव हैंडल ऑल आर नल वैल्यूज नो सपोज वी हैव सर्टन डुप्लीकेट वैल्यू दो वी डोंट हैव इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डेटा सेट बट देर आर चांसेस दैट वी हैव मल्टीपल डुप्लीकेट रोज प्रेजेंट इन आर डेटा सेट सो टू हैंडल दैट वी हैव अनदर फंक्शन दैट इज डी एफ डॉट ड्रॉप डुप्लीकेट्स सो डी एफ डॉट ड्रॉप एंड डुप्लीकेट्स राइट एंड इन दिस ऑल्सो वी हैव टू पास एंड इन प्लेस इक्वल्स ट्रू ओके Now, along with this, in place equals true, we have another argument that is keep, and in keep we define which entry we want to keep in this data set. For example, we want to keep the first or the last one. So here we are going to keep the first occurrence of it. So keep equals, and here we'll pass in first. So quotes and first, and let's execute this. So perfect. So we have all this sorted properly. So this was a way in which we handle duplicates and null values. Now let's move on and see how we can apply certain operations in certain rows or columns. So before moving to it, let's first learn how we can access a row or column in data frames. So for that we have two functions that is lock and i lock. So if we talk about the difference between lock and i lock, it's very basic that loc or lock uses the labels of the data frame whereas the i lock function uses the numeric value or the index of that particular column okay right so let's check the lock first so df dot lock in this lock we pass in two arguments so the first tells about rows and second one tells about the columns that you want so suppose i just want the country column so i'll write here country and let's run this so it has written all the rows so this define rows and this defines which column you want so it has defined so it has written all the rows of country column now suppose if you want two column from this right so we can pass in a list and in this we can write here cast as well and comma name of it so title or name uh, we'll just check it from the columns that we have so it's title okay so let's do that title right and let's run it so now we have country cast and title and all rows of it now suppose we just want 500 to 505 rows so we can write here 500 and till 505 right let's run this it has written only 5 rows from 500 to 505 so here if you see it has included this 505 but in i log it only includes till 504 that is second argument minus 1 also in this we can use slicing as well so for that we can write here df dot columns to check all the columns of it and here we can see we have show id and let's print from show id till director right so we'll write here show id and we want it till director so we'll write here colon we'll remove this uh, opening bracket from here and then we'll write here director perfect so now it has returned show id type title and director that is show id type title and director so this is the functionality of dot lock and if you see i lock so df dot i lock and in this we pass only integer values as i said earlier uh, we want all the rows and we want from suppose 0 1 2 3 3 to 5 okay that is director to country so we will write here 3 colon 5 and let's run this and now we can see it has printed director and cast and not the country as i said earlier in lock it is inclusive the second argument is inclusive whereas in i lock it is exclusive so whichever argument we pass secondary it will be exclusive so it will take one minus from it so also If we write here some numeric value to rows, it will consider that from twenty three to twenty five, right? So it will print only two values because twenty five is not included in it. So this was about lock and i lock. Along with all this functionality of lock and i lock, we can also apply certain conditions to lock. For example, df dot lock, and in this will pass df type. So type. type double equals movie 
right perfect so here we can see it has written all the entries having type equals movie and if you check the original collection here it was having tv show also as type so it has removed all the tv shows and return all the values having type equals movie right so let's check another condition where we'll use this release here so we'll simply copy this release here and paste it here and instead of double equal to we'll simply write greater than 2000 right uh, we have an extra quotes here so let's remove it and run this perfect if we check release error here so it's 2020 2021 21 and so on right so it has applied condition to this and if you check total number of rows this is 8228 so in this way we are now able to extract certain columns based on condition and everything so let's do one thing let's perform some actions on this data frame so for that i'll be using this date added here so i'll just copy this and i'll be typecasting this date added to date time so let's do it so now we have df and then we'll pass here date added and we want to typecast it so pd dot to date time and in this date time we'll pass in df date added as an argument also along with this we have to pass in which format our date time are stored so if you see here we have november 20 and 2019 which means this is month date and then the year right along with a comma in between so we'll write here format equals and in string it will be percent b space then we have percent d for date comma percent year so capital y let's run this this is giving some error so this could be because that this date time is not properly formatted so we'll just typecast this to string and then we'll use strip because at times we have certain spaces in the beginning or at the end so dot strip and let's run it now perfect so it is executed let's print this so we'll copy and paste it here let's check so now this date time is formatted as expected right so now let's do one thing let's calculate the month out of this and create another column of month added right so for that we can write here df month and to add a column we'll simply have to write her column name and assign it some values so we'll write this and we'll copy it paste so to access month of this date added we'll be using dt dot month here let's run it now and let's print this one also so we'll paste and run this perfect so we have 9 11 7 and everything let's check whether this has changed in the original data frame or not so for that we can write here df dot columns so we see at the end we have month present so this is how we can add certain columns and perform some operations on a column or row using pandas so now let's move on to the last concept of this video about indexing on data frame so we have an attribute of index so we can write here df dot index to check what is the current index of this so it's an attribute so if you see this is the number present here now suppose we want to set index as our title so we can use set index function so df dot set index right and in this will pass title set index title and suppose in set index also we can pass an in place equals true to modify it in the original data frame right and suppose if you want to reset it to the original indexing that is the 0 1 2 3 for that also we can write here so let's let's first write here in place equals true first so in place equals true if we now see df index so df dot index and if we run this we have df index as all the titles that we have here right and suppose if we want it to reset it on the original 0 1 2 3 so for that also we have another function named df dot reset index so we'll simply use df dot reset index and again in this also we'll pass in place equals true to modify it in the original document and if you rerun this so we see that it is a range index from 0 to 8790 right so it has now again set up to this 0 1 2 3 right so this is how we can perform actions on indexes so in this video we have learned about the basic concepts of pandas data frame i hope you have learned something new in this video i hope you have learned something new 
सो डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टिल देन हैप्पी कोडिंग